Hello and welcome to another Tech Distractions video. In this one I'm showing off a little project I've been working on for a few months now, Zywords Text Mode Edition. It's a revision of my early attempt which I targeted for CGA graphics mode. You can see in a previous video for Zywords for CGA down in the description below. As a quick recap, Zywords is a crosswords anagram game where you use letters stored in a wheel to generate anagrams and part anagrams to complete the puzzle. It's loosely based on wordscapes which you may be familiar with on mobile platforms. Zywords Text Mode Edition is modest system requirements. It should run on an Intel 8088 CPU with 4.77 MHz, 256 KB of RAM, and MS-DOS 2.11 or higher. For storage, it should run off a single 360 KB floppy, and you'll have enough space to slip it onto a boot disk if that's your jam. For today's video, I'm going to be emulating this configuration using the 86box emulator. As mentioned before, this version is designed for text mode. Early IBM PCs and compatibles supported MDA, or Monochrome Display Adapter, it did not support graphics mode and could only generate ASCII characters such as letters, numbers and symbols. No pixels, no bitmaps, no colours. This version is a significant departure from the original one. Firstly, gone are the CGA graphics files and resources, that's rather obvious. Secondly, I've left out the puzzle editor. At this stage it still requires CGA. Lastly, all the other game assets have been compiled into a few simple files now. You'll see xypuzz.dat, which now houses all of the puzzles and collections data. Graphics.dat, which houses all the ASCII art and graphics resources, well, ASCII graphics anyway. And you would normally see player.dat, but you see player.old here, which is actually the player profiles. And in this case, I've just renamed player.dat to player.old so that I can show you what it looks like when it first starts up with no players. Like the original game, this one's also written in QuickBasic 4.5. I've released the source code as public domain, so feel free to take a look, have a laugh of it. It's pretty messy, not really well documented, but it's not overly complicated either. On startup you do get that first ASCII graphic. It'll load the puzzles, you probably won't see this on a 286 or faster. And as mentioned, when you first load it for the um, new player, you have to enter a name. You can use anything A to Z. Today I'm just going to use TD for tech distractions. Um, you also see this ASCII art on the right hand side here. You also notice sometimes you'll see these letters. I've used ASCII art from the ASCIiArt.com database. Joan Stark, who made this way back when, uh, she makes a lot of the ASCII art. She'll feature prominently throughout this game. Uh, I've tried to respect her by leaving those initials in there where I can. And I've also made credits within the ASCII graphics.dat file. So I'll just enter that. Save the file. Now we'll see that player exist on the screen. Of course you can create, I think it's up to nine players on this one. Don't think anyone would probably want to do more than nine, probably no, no more than one normally. There might be a few people that want to do hot seat. You'll notice on the right hand side here, there's a few, a few choices you've got. Obviously with one player, we can't choose too much. When you go to edit the player, you can just change the name. It'll also show you when you've created it. And obviously I haven't really set the calendar on this 86 bucks emulator, so it is showing 1980 but you can delete them if you like, you can edit them. There's also statistics records. We'll get to that a bit later. It's probably not worth showing now because there'll be nothing in there with a blank player. You can view the help and info. I've, tr I've tried to make the, the document as, as easy to read as possible. It starts off with a quick help, which basically explains how the game works. If you haven't played it before. I've also got like a little bit of a, almost like a screenshot if you will, which is kind of weird for, for ASCII, but there it is. Um, sort of showing how, how the game board looks and what you can expect, the type, different types of words that are involved. Probably, probably if you haven't watched the first one with the CGA version, go, go watch that. It'll explain how the game works. It's not very complicated. If you've played Wordscapes, you've played this. But anyway, I put that in and I've also put a full readme in as well, which takes a little bit longer to start up. This is more of the, the full document that you normally get, the real readme.txt. I've just made that in here. Of course, you can view this in any text editor, but I've just built a very basic one into this that just scrolls up and down, so nothing too fancy. But anyway, on to the game. So when you start playing, you get given a choice of the game style. So I've included free play, which will basically let you use a, a number of puzzles, which are just unlocked and free to play. And then there's puzzle collection. So I'll, I'll show you puzzle in free play first. So you'll see that there's a list of them and, and as you play them your records will, will appear on the right hand side. This is a blank player and you sort of get I think it's eight 
there. And when you go to puzzle collection, things will look a little bit different. You'll see that I've included a couple. I've also got test in here. That was just more me mucking around, but, but by default, they'll be welcome, chill out and spicy, exactly the same as the previous version of the game. And you know, with those, when you go into them, you can play the first puzzle, but the rest of them will be locked as you can see here. So as you, as you play through those puzzles, you'll unlock them. But for the purposes of this demo, I'll start off by using the free play. And we'll just do the very first free play puzzle. It'll load. And you'll see here, this is the main screen that you'll be playing in. You've got your puzzle board here, which is looking a little bit like a crossword. The diamonds are just masked, masked letters. So as you, um, as you unlock the, the letters, they will, they will appear here. I've done a very basic background. I've got a few of these um, put out throughout the game. I just thought it added a nice little touch to an otherwise text mode experience. Um, you've got the puzzle name, difficulty. This one's obviously difficulty one, meaning it's the easiest. Your time elapsed because I've been gas bagging. You'll see that that, that clock's been counting up. There's no time limit with this one. However, there are some puzzles that do have time limits. And same with invalid attempts. So this is basically when you enter a wrong character in. So for example, if I do I, Y, H, which is obviously not a word, you hit enter, you'll make a little noise, give you an invalid, invalid word. I do have some of the puzzles in here that will count down the invalid attempts. They'll give you maybe 10 or five or something. And if you get that many wrong, you'll fail the puzzle just to add a little bit of challenge. Um, you also see here board words. So that just refers to the amount of words that you can actually find within the puzzle to complete it. And then bag words, which are hidden words that don't appear on here. Um, they appear in the bag. Uh, in this one, we don't have any bag words, but as we go along, there'll be a couple and they're just bonus words. Uh, again, just for a little bit of extra challenge. So in this case, uh, if we start actually typing in words that we want to want to type in, you can use a keyboard and you'll see there just typing will we'll make that appear. So there's shy. Give you a little noise when you get something right. I've also made it so that if you're using a um, handheld, like I've got my Nintendo DS, which I'll probably put this on. I've got uh, a couple of little um, handheld consoles that only got a couple of buttons, no keyboards. Um, keyboard use can be can be difficult in, in, in those DOS box sort of um, games on consoles. I've made it so you can use the arrow key. So left and right will, will shift this circle around. It probably looks a little bit silly. Just if you just follow the F, for example, um, when you go left, it'll sort of go around. When you go right, it'll sort of go back. And the idea is whatever letter you've got at the top when you hit spacebar. So for example, because I wanna, I wanna make the word fish, I'll go F, I, S, H. Now that's obviously a, a pretty long way to, to do this. It, would, it probably wouldn't be that good, but at least if you're using a handheld, you can quickly use it. Um, and then it'll just be a simple enter. So you can map, map sort of one or two keys, enter or backspace. Um, that's just something I decided to put in for this one. Nothing, nothing too interesting there. Um, the other words in this puzzle, ifs and his for his. And I think you can probably guess what this last word here is. Puzzle's clear. You'll see that it gives you all these sorts of little statistics here about how long it took you, how many words per minute. Obviously, I was I was pretty damn slow with my ones there. It tells you how many invalid attempts you've done any bag words that you found if necessary. And then when you actually found the keyword, the idea is all the, all the puzzles in this game are, are revolving around keywords. So you can press Y to go to the next puzzle. You can press R to retry it. So if I retry the puzzle and this time I do it a little bit faster. So ironically, once it loads. So it is shy. This time we'll go fishy straight and then fish. We've cleared the puzzle and because we've retried it, it'll give us a couple of records. So it'll come back and say, hey, look, you, you did the puzzle a lot faster this time. Your speed was way up. You got less invalid attempts, but it doesn't give you a record for the keyword. And it was sort of a, it was a bit of a thing I wanted to do where the first time you find the keyword, uh, I wanted to capture how long it took you to, to do that. But if you improve on that later, because you already know what it is, it didn't seem to be much point having a record for it. Um, you could probably argue the same with the rest of the puzzles, but I just thought that one I'd, I'd not put, put in there. So that's why it doesn't look like that. But anyway, that's, um, that's the record management for the free play. And now when you go back in to the free play puzzle, 
And you'll notice, um, just one thing too, you'll notice how slow everything kind of looks on the updates. Um, I do have this configured to run as a 4.77 megahertz XT. So if I up the speed, um, yeah, obviously the the speed will be a lot faster, but I did want to sort of show what it would look like on, on an XT. And, and I have put this on, I've got a couple of XTs here, um, one of which is a, is a 4.77 megahertz. And I can tell you the speed's about the same. So just easy, easy enough to use the emulator. But you'll see now that you've obviously got your best time there, six seconds. And if you do the same with the rest, you'll, you'll see this pop up. Uh, and also, just in regards to the records, you'll see down here too, we've got some playtime, how many times you found a word, completed puzzles. The idea of this was just to build a bit of cumulative stats. So as you play the games more or you spend more time on it, all, all this will sort of add up and, and save into your stats. Not for any particular purpose, I just wanted to do it for the heck of it. In the, in the puzzle collection, of course, as I was mentioning before, we've got a, a couple of different puzzles. I'll start off with just the welcome intro one. I don't want to do too many spoilers. So you can find all these keywords yourself. A similar background with this one, but I think you can figure out here. We've got owl, bowl, blow, which is the keyword, and low. But before I do low to complete the puzzle, I'm going to just stop for a second. You'll notice we've got some bag words here. So when you do F2, it'll tell you that you haven't found any bag words yet. And I know what these ones are, because obviously I made the game. Lob is one of them. You'll hear there the little, little feedback there for the bag words, and it will appear in, in there. And there's, there's one other one. Now we've got both of them. So at least then we've done, we've done both, of the, both of the words there that were, were hidden. Now you've completed the puzzle. A little sparkle, a little star flying there, and there's Haley, um, Haley's little star picture there, which I've added. Uh, again, you've got your time taken, your speed, all that stuff. I, look, I didn't do a very good job because again, I was gas bagging, but you know, you can go on and play the next puzzle. Replaying these doesn't doesn't make any difference. You, you may get a better record on, on say the speed and the time taken, but it's not going to make any difference to the collection. But what it does do, whenever you you complete one of these puzzles. You'll see now that we've obviously got 11% complete there. It took us 44 seconds and now we can choose intro two and, and keep on going. So that's just a way to progress around. So now I'll just go back to player select. Because we've played a couple of games now, we can hit F5 and the records and statistics will start. And this, this is quite slow when you've got a few players, particularly on an XT, but again, anything 286 and above, it's gonna fly. It simply drags a bunch of data out of the records management that's got there and assembles it in a, in a format that looks a bit more pleasing than going through a text file, I guess. Or going through a flat text file. It still is a text file. <laughs> should correct myself there. So this is the statistics report that it shows. It'll show that we've played eight games. There's eight in total. Sorry, eight in total on free play. I've only completed one of them in free play. Cumulative stats, you can see again, this is sort of what we were looking at before. Three minutes, I've found 16 words. I've replayed or completed puzzles three times and I've got a t one total error over the journey. When you hit page down, you'll start to see these different, um, sorry, I'll just scroll there, puzzle stats, for example, how many puzzles I've completed in total. So I've completed one in, one in the free play and one in collection. So it's two unique puzzles. My average words per minute, average key time, average bag words, etc. So it's just, just a little way to sort of monitor how long it takes you to do things. Um, I don't really have any grand plans for this. It was just sort of an idea. And, and obviously all these rest of these are zero. But what I did want to show you, and I may need to use the magic of video editing here because it may be a little bit slow. I'm just going to delete that player.dat that I just made. And I'm going to rename an, a one I did a little bit earlier. And of course I did it so that I could I could debug the code. But more importantly, it, it was good to show how the statistics look with, with a full player board or with, with a couple of players in and a few puzzles done. So now we've got three different players. So here we are. With a few different players in that I've loaded with a previous profile, you can see that we've got quite a few more statistics loaded here. I've even used just some fancy symbols in those names for no particular reason. 
One of them's pretty much completed all of the puzzles, or has completed all the puzzles. Five minutes, 213 words. So I did, did a fair bit of testing with this. The unique puzzle stats are there, the collection puzzles are there, so it'll tell you how much progress they've done of it all. And then you go down to sort of some of the, the records and, and bits and pieces. And I think I think with free one, actually, if I look at that, I would have done that one a couple of times. And you can see sometimes I've, I've gotten a pretty quick time there, two seconds, um, two minutes 30. I mean, and it's funny on the XT, basically your, your, your first half a second is taken up by the, the uh, input being ready. Um, I make sure I only start the timer once the graphics is, is fully drawn or the screen is fully drawn, but still uh, two seconds from there to complete that puzzle. So type the five words. So yeah, just a, just an, for me, it was just an interesting little concept to have this, this records management. I was going to build some fancy graphs and tables and little records and stuff, but I thought, look, it's, it's probably a little bit of overkill. And to be honest, I'm not sure how many people are actually going to want to um, even play with multiple players on this thing, let alone record their own stats. So it was more just a bit of a, a fun thing to do. So there we have it. Zywords text mode edition running in 256 kilobytes of RAM on an 8088 CPU at 4.77 megahertz with a monochrome display and a 360K floppy drive. And just to show you that I'm not joking, we've got that 256K right there. So that that should run on any of the old Tandys, might even run on a couple of palm tops. I'd be keen to see if anyone does end up running it on something a bit obscure or a little bit old, uh, it'd be good to see it actually working. Anyway, feel free to take a look at the source code, feel free to give me some comments, and I hope you enjoyed having a bit of a look at this game. Cheers.